Okay, we now welcome on a very, 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 very special guest. It's been a long time coming. It is Heisman Trophy winner, national champion, pro bowler, and also just one of the best teammates ever. That's our guess, but I think we'll we'll find that through this interview. It's Jameis Winston. Jameis, thank you for coming here. We appreciate it. You flew to Chicago to come on this show. So first of all, thank you, because we've wanted to have you on for a very long time, and this is a thrill for us to have you in studio. No, I'm I'm grateful to to be in y'all presence. I mean, I've heard the first very first time I heard about Parma Tate was uh, Ryan Griffin, uh, who yes. was a uh, quarterback with me in Tampa, and he always told me like, hey, like, hey, Dan loves you, like PFT, like they're all pulling for you. So I'm just grateful to be here in this beautiful studio, man. And I just got so much respect for what y'all are doing and the uh, the audience that you're um, inspiring and influencing. So it's an honor. I love it. I Thanks, love it. Jay. And also just for people who are listening, if if we uh, we don't know what the Super Bowl is yet because we're taping this in mid to late January we're going to run it Super Bowl week so mm -hmm. um if we make a, a statement about one of the teams then it's like what are you guys talking about that's the context behind it but yes thank you for being here um I don't even know where I mean there's so much stuff I want to talk about there's a lot I just just like how are you feeling right now how's the health oh, yeah. so I know that you had you had the vertebrae issues you had some tendons going on so how are you doing yeah I'm I'm, I'm healing I think that's like one of the biggest thing that me and, me and Nadia talk about this offseason because it's been three years in a row where I've been injured you yeah. know I've been not where I want to be heading to the offseason so uh, a lot of uh, other people like PTs and uh, athletic trainers they 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 have most of my schedule mm -hmm. because I'm doing rehab I'm doing uh, I have to be a dislocation for an extended period of time just to Really make do the due diligence of the process of healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I'm very excited and grateful that I get to attack this off season, uh, healthier, and uh, and be able to to grow. Yeah, you were playing with a uh, back fracture at one point. Yeah. I, that's incredible. Was yeah. there even a, a doubt that you were like I'm I'm still playing like I got to get out there with my guys? Well, I, I believe it's it's always um, that warrior mentality. Like once you get in between the lines, uh, I think a lot of players deal with so much that it's it's just uh, it's second nature just to go out there and battle and go out there and give your all because we all know that these opportunities don't last right so I would rather risk everything for my brothers and be out there and take advantage of the opportunity that I have than to be just you know not doing it just because of a little pain yeah, yeah and I think that's just a credit to uh really all the athletic trainers and the doctors that help get you back on the field, yeah. but it's also a credit, credit to the mental toughness that these guys have day in and day out. Well, that's, I mean, our, our theory is you're one of the best teammates from everyone we've talked to. Obviously, the end of the season, um, you you know, made some headlines with the, the last game in Jamal Williams. Did it feel good, though, seeing all your teammates come to your back? Because it was like tweet after tweet and people commenting, being like, we ride for Jameis. Like, this yeah. was a team decision. We love our guy. Right. It had to feel pretty good, like, seeing that. Yeah, you know, it it was uh I was grateful that my my boys they rode with me, but like they they see me every single day. They they know the intent of my heart, you know. And I I went and approached you know some of the higher ups in the organization just to get their perspective and talk to them about it. And uh you know they really handled it really well, you know, having conversations with them because again they know my intent. You know they see me working with the practice squad receivers on off days, you know, to ensure uh, that they're going to be prepared if their numbers call. They see me working with the young DBs, you know, making sure that that they know how the the quarterbacks on the other team or the offensive coordinators trying to attack them in, in certain situations. So I think they know the intent of my heart. So when you are in a building with guys and you are uh, battling with them and you go through a full season with guys, when you have an opportunity like that, I feel like that was one of the most unique opportunities that really the NFL has ever seen. Yeah. When, when you get a uh, ball at the one, the, the ball at the one yard line with the significance of your team and a brother that you uh, are looking for. And that's just what I am. I'm all in on increasing the people that's around me. Mm -hmm. So when we have that opportunity, uh, it's never out of 
uh, out of disrespect. It's never out of, uh, you know, strife. It's out of like, man, this is love. It's a trust and commitment that I have with my brothers. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that we were able to um, just continue to show how connected we were as a team uh, through any type of adversity because – we wanted to we wanted to focus on the win. Right, like that was a that was a great win uh, to finish the season because we were playing for a lot. That was a playoff game. Right, in our eyes because I, we didn't know what our what our future you know held yeah. after that. Yeah, and credit to you by the way for for that reporter who you you handled that well when yeah. you're like no disrespect. You guys you guys gotten a little no disrespect mm-hmm. off because he kept on being like I thought it was disrespectful. It's like well yeah I didn't. Well, <laughs> well you always you gotta you gotta respect you know people's perspective. Like, that's just how I was raised. Like, I'm going to respect any perspective that you're coming off from. But I know, like, I know what my intent was. And I think, like, sometimes we are so conditioned, uh, really conditioned by facts, circumstances, and situations that we're like, it's out of tradition for that to happen. It's out of tradition for you to uh, run a play out of victory. And I do believe, like, that was the biggest, uh, that that was probably the largest thing about us running the play out of victory and I think the it's it's behind us but I believe like if I would do anything I would tell the guys like hey um we probably wouldn't do it out of victory yeah line up regular yeah line yeah, up regular right. but I, but the thing about the play is we are in there having a conversation in the huddle and the defense knew right like I, I my right guard like they asked us are you taking a knee my right guard sees he's like no, we're not taking a knee like they yeah. knew like I, so they were prepared it wasn't just like okay they're not even getting in their stances. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I'm a I'm a forward thinker, and we have to put that behind us and keep going. But I'm grateful that I got a chance to address that, man, yeah, because yeah. A lot, not a lot of people understand, again, the longevity of a season, the work that it goes into, especially when you got a guy that led the league in touchdowns, 17 touchdowns last year with one team. In his first year, he's making a, you know, a, a, a change in his life. This is his first time you know, being able to get in the end zone. So that feeling uh, of, again, trust and commitment as brothers uh, was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was great to watch. And, yeah, as Big Cat said, your teammates all had your back afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like, they were like, it was a team decision. We did it for the right reasons. And I think when, when people ask you about it, they try to make you feel bad about the decision. Mm-hmm. But I know that you did it because, like, the things you asked Jamal Williams to do this year that he's not used to doing, and he did it as a good teammate. I think yeah, you said it best. There was a, a video that went viral the other day. You said, King the Man. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so that's what you're doing. You're trying to help out your teammates. So you're looking forward and uh, you got a big off season in front of you. I know that you love New Orleans. Yeah. You are. You've become like a New Orleans guy. Uh, are you planning on staying in New Orleans? Are you planning on spreading your wings, going somewhere else, seeing what the market has to offer you? Yeah. The biggest thing about my love for New Orleans is this is I feel like the first city that truly embraced uh, me, you know, just my just who I am what I stand for how I move and I think it's just like the south like that southern hospitality you know I'm I'm from Alabama so grew up watching Drew Brees you know grew up watching Aaron Brooks you know the early years Mm -hmm. of the Saints and just saw how they grew so when I was able to get thrust thrown into this environment I was just like man I had so much gratitude to be here because I am five hours from home. You know, mm-hmm. my, my wife's side, uh, her dad's side of the family is from New Orleans. So I, I instantly felt a connection with this city and the way that they represent, you know, their guys, you know, the way that they, they bring culture. Yeah. You know like it's a different country. New Orleans, you go to New Orleans, it's a different country. It's the coolest thing in the world. Cause it, like, it's, it's unlike any other place in America. It really is. Yeah. Like when you, like we were talking about Bourbon Street yeah. earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, like you're like, man, like where am I at? Yeah. You know? Uh, but in terms of this off season, uh, I feel like I've played every role that a quarterback can play yeah. uh, with the New Orleans Saints. You know, I've, I've been a starter. You know, uh, I, I've been a backup. You know, I, I've been someone to to help. You know, bring up some of the the young bucks. You know, I'm I'm very intentional with everything that I do. So wherever I'm at, obviously my main goal is to be a strong quarterback in this league, you know, and when that opportunity presents itself, that will be what takes me away from Mm -hmm. any place because that's my dream. That's my goal. My, my dream and my passion is to win a Super Bowl, lead a team to the Super Bowl in any way, any shape or form. So uh, I'm definitely uh, able to do those things, you know, from a behind the scenes perspective. But I think just the, the hunger of a competitor yeah. wants to be out there in between those lines, wants to be out there 
having an opportunity and doing his best to lead his team to the promised land. Like, mm-hmm. um, I, I, like the, the Bible talks about Moses and Aaron, and you know how Aaron was a great, you know, brother for Moses, but Moses is the, is the, is who you know gets the stories He's in the Bible. starting like, quarterback. Like, yeah, he, he yeah. is the, he is the prophet yeah. that you know that that they listen to. Aaron was a great help. Mm-hmm. You know, and he 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 lived according to his purpose. But I want to be, you know, I want to have that level of significance. Yeah, you know, and everyone has their own story. Everyone has their own calling to purpose. But it's different when you're that guy. Yeah, you know, if you Moses have, was him. Yeah, if you have you two know, Moses's, yeah. you don't have one. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Moses was that dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's one of heck. one. Yeah. Um. All right. So a story that maybe gets misconstrued. So I want to hear it from you. Uh, before you got LASIK. Were you playing quarterback blind? Because <laughs> that was when when it was when it came out that you got LASIK and you're like, now I can read license plates and now I can do all yeah. this. Like, <laughs> hold on, was Jameis actually like the greatest quarterback ever? Because he couldn't see and he was still putting up crazy numbers. Yeah, well, uh, I had astigmatism, right? But my my vision wasn't. Uh, I wasn't blind. You know, I was like, I was like, I think I was like sixty twenty in my right eye, and I was like, what forty. 40 20 uh-huh. in my left eye so i wasn't i wasn't blind right um and that's why like in college everybody used to give me for the, the squinting yeah, yeah. you, you squint. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Squinting. but i was squinting all the way in high school you know and this was like my sophomore year where i had to go and get uh, a prescription for reading glasses you know mm-hmm. my vision my vision went bad but i was having these migraines and pinkies was going numb and you know we went to the doctor and they was like well you know it's because you're straining with your, your eyes i was like what do, you, what do you mean i'm straining my eyes you know because i could see very far away but when things got up close like it was it was tough so reading and like studying like i would get migraines and it would be very bad so uh, i think that's where when i got to the books i was like it, i was coming on my my fifth year option and i was like man if I can do anything to enhance my ability or grow just a little bit, mm-hmm. if having perfect vision is, yeah. is the thing that's limiting me from that, I'm gonna go get yeah. LASIK. You know, yeah. and then I did the research about you know how it lasts for like 25 years, and you just gotta go and keep getting. I was like 25 years, like psh, my NFL career, psh, I'll probably be you know a GM by the end. Yeah. You know, so Ooh, this like this that. is worth it. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. could you notice the difference right away? Instantly. Yeah. Like man, like when I was up under the the thing, like it was, was kind of. It's kind of weird because, you know, I, I I I didn't feel it, but I could smell my eyeball burning. Oh, jeez! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like they, cause they did they did it with a laser. And like, I, yeah, I could smell. Like, I, have, <laughs> no one has ever smelt burnt eyeballs. You know what I'm saying? So like, you can only you can only imagine like that that type of you know smell that is. Yeah. So when I smelled, when I got up, you know, the doctor, you know, anytime you wake up. And the doctor is smiling, like, and he has his mask on, but you, I can see a smile. Yeah, like he's like, I've done this, this amazing work. Yeah, you know, and I was, just, I, was like, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was just like, like this is amazing. It like, cured, yeah. it cured Jameis Winston's eyes. It's so, all, yeah. it's the funny great. part. Yeah. The funny part is like I had to wear you know P of T shades yeah you know for the first six weeks yeah <laughs> you know, really first three days yeah and I had these bifocals on and the old people glasses yeah, yeah. they're yeah. like blind it, people glasses it, that's, it's it's always good to see a doctor like celebrating after a surgery yeah like, you're like okay that's like, a that's, good that's confidence yeah that yeah. went well you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that's world class I know the job was done Boy. yeah yeah <laughs> so the first time you stepped on a field after the surgery were you like this is this is a lot easier well the depth perception was the biggest thing you uh-huh. know I didn't even realize like because my whole thing, like I can see, obviously I can see big figures like coming at me and like mm-hmm. reading coverage and just seeing how, uh, and that's more mental with pre-snap reads and just seeing the rotation and, and things of that nature. But I just feel like the depth of a linebacker, like eight yards and 12 yards is completely different, mm-hmm. you know? And when you're able to identify and confirm that someone is dropping uh, at a shorter depth than really sinking back, you're able to trust that throw and, you know, and confirm it and let it, let it rip. Versus when you're just dropping back and you're just like, I feel the rotation, I feel the depth, like, but I trust in my arm more than I trust in and can confirm the depth of a linebacker dropping or the yeah. width that a safety is getting. Now it's just like it's no second, it's no second guess, it's no, it's no, um, it's no, like I said, no second guessing. It's just trust and confirm and let it rip. Yeah, so I mean, that was the biggest improvement. We, when you played for uh, for Coach Arians, we've had him on the show a couple times. Great yeah. dude. I think he might be the one person in the world that loves the deep ball as much as you do. <laughs> yeah. You guys both just love to air the ball out. What was that like learning from him? Because he's been called quarterback whisper, but also his offense is, is weird where in your first year in a system with him, 
a lot of times there's so many options that the receivers have that it takes a little bit to get on the same page. But what was it like working with with Coach Arians? Yeah, it was a uh, it was an amazing experience working with him because he was actually the first person that gave me this vision of being a Super Bowl winning champion quarterback. Um, he used to have these uh, these camps in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, that Nadia's husband, Otis, my, my trainer right now, Otis Leverett, used to put on at this place called Sports Blast. And uh, and I went there t two years in a row, and I won an MVP, you know, and he would show me his ring, and he would let me know, like, hey, you're going to be a, a great quarterback uh, in the NFL one mm -hmm. day. And I was like, hey, coach, I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like, like, you a freaking off offensive coordinator for, at that time, Mr. Pittsburgh Steelers uh, that, he, that he wanted with. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm grateful, grateful for that. So when he got into Tampa, I was like, okay, this is it. Like, this is who I've been – I've been molded to play for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's the one that gave me this vision. So I just think his perspective of uh, really just making the defense stop you, like not uh, not surrendering to what you're getting, but like, hey, we're going to attack you. Like, because that's what the defense does. Well, the defense are reactors, but when they blitz, that's a form of, of attacking. Right. You know what I'm saying? So his philosophy is like, we're going to make the defense have to stop us. We're not going – focus on what they're doing and make our offense built off uh, of what they're doing. But I really spent a lot of time with Clyde Christensen and Byron Leftwich. So I feel like B.A. was in that role where, you know, he's bringing the mentality, he's bringing uh, the system. But, man, Byron, he really he really did his thing, yeah. you know, in terms of just calling plays, in terms of, like, he was the coordinator running meetings. Like, so being able to not only get coached by someone that was – uh, who, I, who I had on a high pillar, you know, that inspired me. But seeing uh, a quarterback who's played in this league, who was coached by B.A., you know what I'm saying, who I admire. Like, you, everyone, when you think about Byron Leffert, you think about the courageous uh, yes. drive he had. Marshall, and, yeah. And, uh, and Marshall with a, with a broke leg. Yep. You know, so it was – you play for bigger – like, you can never play bigger than yourself. But with emotions and mentality, you always have – like, you're looking for a, a certain edge. Like, why do I want to fight for this guy? I'm going to fight for Byron because Byron played this position. Yeah. Byron has been in my shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he knows exactly how I feel. You know, why do you want to fight for B.A.? I want to fight for B.A. because B.A. inspired me to, to do this job. He, mm -hmm. he confirmed that I could, you know, have this opportunity. And, uh, and I can't forget Clyde Christensen. And uh, people don't realize about Clyde. I feel like that was my best um, technique year. You know, it was an amazing year. You know, I led I led the league in passing yards, and I led the league in a in, well, I was second to the MVP in touchdowns. Mm -hmm. uh, MVP was Mar Jackson that year. But Clyde Christensen, uh, who trained Payne Manning uh, for all those years at Indy, uh, Tom Moore, yep. who's the office coordinator uh, with Payne Manning. Oh, so the level of gratitude that I just had, who B.A. brought in, you know, you see when I left, they won a Super Bowl, is because B.A. brought in that culture and he was preparing the Bucks to ascend. You yeah. Know, you know, obviously he's uh, uh, he has a, a larger role uh, in Tampa Bay, but just the people that he surrounds his player with, I was just thinking about the doctors that he brought in, you know, the the recovery me uh, mechanism that he brought in, the uh, strength coach, Anthony Paroli, that he brought in. Like he, him being coming from Pittsburgh and seeing – Indianapolis, like he brought that Super Bowl winning culture back to Tampa Bay. Yeah, and I, I was grateful to to work with him. When so, you got a guy that that believes in you, that has that type of pedigree, then you want to live up to his expectations, mm -hmm. right? It's like since you said it, I don't want to disappoint you, so I'm going to do everything I can uh, because now you've made me believe in myself, and I want you to be right about me, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and and I think that works both ways, uh, especially when. Like I, I've been doing a lot of stuff just on mindfulness of uh, learning to be more self self aware and uh, understanding uh, how to convey my emotions. And I believe I believe like initially when I first got into this league, um, I was a people pleaser. You know, uh, just 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 because like man, I, uh, my dad coached me in little league. You know, so just my early years of uh, being a football player. You know. I want to please my dad, right? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. I want I want to make sure every coach that I've had in my whole life, I I view from a, a lens of my father, you know, because I respect my authority, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Every time I say that, you know, I think about <laughs> South Park. Park. Yeah, yeah. Respect the authority, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyways, like, so that's just how I was I was wired. Yeah. You know, so when you are in an opportunity where you know you got an authoritative figure uh, that you trust that instills that trust in you and you're a person that's a people pleaser, 
you're going to do everything that they say to a T. So when you run a meeting, someone says, risk it, no biscuit. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're like, okay. Yeah. I'm here to risk it. Yeah. Sometimes the biscuit, you know, kind of kind of gets gets away from you. But it it was um, I think like you said, PFT, when you have people that believe in you, and I, I and I think that's what I'm looking for, you know, with a job opportunity. Yeah. You know, someone that believes, you know, that I can lead their team uh to a Super Bowl. And obviously that comes with uh actions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why this offseason is so important. You know, yeah. that's why uh, I take pride of being a great teammate, because when you're able to act upon what you want to achieve, mm-hmm. that's how you truly obtain success. Yeah. So you, you mentioned baseball. I want to talk baseball real quick. Uh, you were a great baseball player. Mm-hmm. You loved playing baseball, I assume, because you played it in college as well. Do you think you could have played in, in major leagues? Like I, you were what were you throwing? I do. So at the end of Florida State, I was topping out at 98. Oh, but I, I said damn. like I said 92, yeah. 95. And uh, man, I, I miss baseball so much, and uh, and I, I truly believe that me not playing baseball did not allow me to achieve certain athletic movements on the football field that I was when I was playing baseball every single day. Uh, really, from a hidden perspective, yeah, you know, I didn't realize how much um, thoracic, like lumbar rotation that I was. Uh, not able to um, be as powerful in because I was a switch hitter. Right. You know, so when you in the cages and you batting from the right side, taking, you know, up to 500 cuts, you know, on the right side and then 500 cuts on the left side, you know, when you're doing that, like think about your thoracic rotation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you moving a lot and you look at the, the, the I would say, the most prolific quarterbacks in the league now, they have different arm slots. Yeah. You know, they have an uncannily ability to throw in different situations with their body being contorted from a different different, different way, yeah. from a different plane. So I feel like that I had to focus more on, you know, doing T-spine rotations and practicing yoga just a little bit more to get that ro- rotation. But it's it's different when you have a, a, a different sport. Yeah. That's allowing you to to do those movements. It, yeah, it's like it's a hot topic now too with like kids and specialization and, and it feels like most people who make it to the pros are like, no, let the kids play all the sports. Right. It, will, it will teach them something that they'll pick up for whatever sport they want to go forward with. Right. Because just focusing on one sport, you're you're taking away all these different skills that they might learn in baseball or whatever. So you, do you think you would have played in, in the big leagues? I do believe that I, w- I would have made it to the, to the show. Um, uh, I do you felt, think you could maybe still, maybe second act, double Dion, uh, I, like Dion? <laughs> I, listen, I promise you, I believe in myself. Yeah, you know, in, in, any time of the day. But you know, out of respect for the people that still put in the work. Yeah, you know, to make it to the show. Baseball is one of the most uh, failing sports there is. Yeah. yeah, you know, out there, you know, obviously, you know, golf is very defeating. Yes, at, at yes. times, if, if you, you know, if you don't practice. Yeah, but baseball is the scenarios that you're put in. I feel like, especially when you talk about kids specializing on certain things, it teaches you different disciplines. Mm -hmm. When you think about a pitcher, right, as a pitcher, your job is to, you know, hit the mitt, right? But literally, you're by, it's you and the ball. Right. And that is it. Like you, they say it's you and the catcher, but the batter has a say so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's you and the ball. It's about your location. It's about okay. Let's take a calculated risk here. Okay, I know this guy. You know his his hot spot is high and inside, right? So instead of throwing a four seam that's just gonna be flat and let him, you know, hit his pitch, mm-hmm. you throw a two seam. So it runs in a little bit more on his hands. So he think he thinks he sees it coming. Boom, you get his hands. Like it's very calculated things between that as a batter, right? I. When I when I think about a batter, I, first thing I think about is a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know what the pitch the pitchers do. I know what his stuff is, right? Quarterback. I know I know what a defense's lead coverage is. You know what I'm saying? I know versus a a, a different front. I know what I'm probably going to get. I've done uh re, like study the different tendencies of the pressures that they like to to bring at a certain time. But as a batter, you like okay. I watch film on you know this pitcher. I know he likes you know change ups, uh, low and away. You know, uh, with with one strike, you know, so I'm going to prepare for that, but I have to react to the fastball, right? Mm-hmm. So when I'm sitting that behind the center, like okay, like I I know 
that, uh, you know, the big Vangio defense is going to show a, a too high shell uh, for the majority. But once I get to snap, I have to, again, trust and confirm, like, oh, I have rotation. All right, well, the rotation is to the strength. Okay, it's cover three. So, boom, my eyes start here. Yeah. You know, and as a batter, you think about a quarterback, you have the same amount, like, really, probably less time as a batter because you have to react to the ball. But you don't have, you know, uh, Jadavion Clowney and Miles Garrett and yeah. Mike Parsons rushing yeah. you. Yeah. You know, so when you think about those disciplines that baseball teaches you and how you can relate it to football, how you can relate it to boxing, you know, in terms of like being in a pocket, being able to take, you know, purposeful strikes, you know, uh, as a boxer, when you think about Floyd Mayweather, people know him about his defense. But when you look at his strike, like his, his strike uh, accuracy, like he's landing a very high percentage of his strikes. You know, when you think about um, – I think in today's game, quarterbacks are having such high completion percentages is because offenses are created more for the quick game, mm -hmm. for throws behind the line of scrimmage that allow people to catch and run. And we think about boxing, those are those jabs. Yeah. So those are those jabs. But the ability to hit, you know, the ability to knock somebody out, the ability to hit a ball 60, to throw a ball 60 yards down the field, that is, you know, that's the that's the dagger. That's, yeah. That's the yeah. stake in the, in, in the heart. Yeah. You know, so I think these disciplines, and I'm so happy that you brought up the spatialization, I think you learn so many different experiences in different sports that you won't be able to, really learn in life until you experience it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And and we've seen some of that in your famous workout videos that yes. you like to post online. We love, we're big fans. Of yeah, workout videos. I know that sometimes you post them and you're like, yeah, people are going to laugh at this one, but it's funny. And I, and I'm doing this with a purpose. Um, my favorite one, I think is the one where you drop back and you have a baseball bat in your hand yeah. and then you're in the pocket and you just swing a baseball bat from the pocket. You're yeah. like that. That's just a dude that loves sports right there. Yeah. Or the blindfolded three point shot that you made uh, yep. with, with a football. Yeah. That was a good one. What's the towels your, and the dog the towels in the backyard. The dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's your, what's your favorite one that you put out? So, um, like, uh, uh, my whole life, you know, I've always got this, you like, I'm, I'm sure you, I'm, like, you tried to do that. Yeah. Or, or like, oh, you, you doing this, like, on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm very intentional in everything that I do. So when I'm doing something, I'm all in. Yeah. It's not, it's not jokes. It's not fun and games to me. This is my work. This is my craft, right? This is my passion. Like I said, like Bruce Aarons inspired me to be a Super Bowl winner. But I've been training for this moments, for these moments. Like you don't, you don't spend ten years in the NFL for f fun, fun and jokes and games. Right. You spend ten years because you love the game and you love the people. You love everyone that's involved with that game. Mm. So these drills that I do, I, I literally. I'm making these drills up based off of what I'm experiencing on the field. You know what I'm saying? Again, I didn't I didn't continue to play baseball. So how can I enhance my, you know, my torque? How can I make sure that my hip to shoulder dissociation uh is being uh detailed? Man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna get in the pocket, I'm gonna simulate with my helmet, I'm gonna take my drops and I'm gonna take a swing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like that, those are things that that happens. You know, uh Big shout out to C.J. Stroud in the prolific year that he's having. You know, when C.J. Stroud is taking swings, baseball swings on the sideline, it is it's magic. When C.J. Stroud is you know shooting yep. shooting basketball like before the game, it's it's magic because this game is predicated on what winning. Yep. you win. Ain't nobody making fun of no no jokes. Yeah, you know, this is this is you know this is amazing. You yeah, know, like look at look at the technique that he's using when he's swinging that bat. It's so know? true. Yeah, like, it's so true. So so. I, I I definitely embrace you know the the laughter. Yeah, laughter gives you life, you know. And I and uh you know sometimes I could be be funny, but I also embrace the grind. I embrace like the thought that me and my trainer put into these these workouts. You know, I I, I embrace the lessons that we learn. You know, because we paying attention to feedback. Like, how, how can you get better if you don't if you don't understand why you're doing something or you gain, or don't gain perspective? You know, we're always pushing to be greater than what we were. Yeah. You know, if if you're not trying to get better, like you definitely get worse. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Right. That's well so said. so when I when I approach the off season, that's why I'm having meetings with Nadia, and that's why my assistant is is traveling with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I still got to get my work in. Yeah. You know, just because I'm obviously I'm grateful to be here with y'all, but things are still being done. Like, if do you do you believe? Let me ask you, what what do y'all believe? made barstool such a household name is it is it because of the people that you had on the show or is it because 
of the undercover work that y'all do yeah. every single day before y'all even got yeah. to this platform mm -hmm. to allow you to be who you are. It, it, it's a good point because we, we have a dream job. We have the best job in the world. But I do think there's sometimes where we don't give ourselves enough credit where we work really hard and we work long hours and it's fun. That's the problem is like when we say work, it's like we get to go watch, you know, 12 hours of football and that's everyone would want to do that. So, but yeah, I, I think we do put in that effort because we always want to be giving our best effort. Like we don't want to show up and not be ready for doing a show. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, it's true. And there's, yeah. a, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and went on behind the scenes before we were at this platform. Mm -hmm. Like the, the work that nobody really sees when you're grinding on the way up, on the way up, on the way up, there's, you spend more time like learning your craft, detailing your craft on the way up to prepare you for once you get to that level. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that people I guess haven't seen, but I guess a lot of that work was also just also watching football. Yeah. And it, so. it is funny because I always think about like people who have made it in life. Um, the one thing I always don't like is that they kind of forget about the lucky breaks along the way. And we've had a lot of lucky breaks, mm -hmm. you know, we've had things break our way, different paths that we've taken. We went left, we went right. So like, I also just admit that, that like we're, we, we have luck, mm -hmm. you know, there's anyone who's successful has gotten a lucky break at some point. Mm -hmm. And to pretend that that didn't exist, that always bothers me where they're like, well, I was always great. I was always going to be great. No, you had, you had something happen right. in your life where a lucky break propelled you even further. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I challenge you on that take, you know, I believe in, four leaf clovers because i've seen some okay so, so i know luck can be real but i'm, I'm not really a, a big proponent of luck you, you don't think there's any luck that is cut like well i don't believe that anything's happened i, I, don't, I don't think there's no such thing as, uh, as a coincidence yeah i believe it's intentional everything that we're doing is either enhancing where we're at right now either we are being a, a, a person of increase or we really just failing yeah. The day. Well, okay, so so for example, like your relationship with Jimbo Fisher, which is an incredible relationship. We had Jimbo on. You guys won a national title together. I'm sure you were recruited a bunch of different places. There's a chance that you go somewhere else or like you you know, the decision is different. There's a little bit of luck involved that like Jimbo, you and Jimbo were the perfect marriage at that perfect time mm -hmm. in both of your careers. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's like not it's not saying that you're lucky, it's that there's little things that happen along the way that you're like, you look back and you're like, oh, that was really good that it happened exactly that way. Yeah, no, and 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 again, like as I said, I don't, I don't disagree. Yeah. With with your your method, I just believe that Jimbo and I were, it was already planned. Yeah. You know, like, I think the the biggest thing that people miss, uh, and and this is what social media gives us, it, it gives us instant access to everyone's lives, but I think people miss the people factor mm -hmm. really being around other people and building on those connections that you already have yeah or those connections that you have yet to make and i think when you are around people with similar energy right with uh, a similar mindset those energies they work towards each other they go together jimbo had a lot to prove yeah right jimbo was uh you know he was coming from lsu he was filling in the steps of bobby bowden you know, the the legend coach. And this is Florida State. Like, I get it. Florida State isn't in the SEC. But historically, this has been a, a, a dominant uh, college. And for you to fill up the shoes of Bobby Baum and for people to always connect you with Nick Saban yep. your entire career, you have a chip on your shoulder to say, like, hey, I'm going to accomplish something that, again, okay, I'm going to have my Moses moment. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm, I'm not going to be Aaron. You yes. know, it's nothing wrong with being Aaron, but I'm, I'm going to be Moses. Yeah. You know, and when I got with Jimbo, like Jimbo expressed that to me because unlike a lot of people, like a lot of people just, and, and, and it's not judging, but some people aren't wired the way that others, you, you hear the term like we ain't come from the same cloth. Yeah. Right. I instantly knew Jimbo and I were cut from the same cloth because Jimbo wanted a championship. Yeah. And he was going to do whatever he could to get that. I'm a kid from Alabama. I'm 35 minutes from Alabama. Listen, people, when when I committed to Florida State, the things that happened to me and my family was unbelievable living in the state of Alabama. 35 minutes yeah. from Tuscaloosa. I mean, my mailbox, I can get beat down. You know what I'm saying? Thank, thank the Lord, you know, Home Depot had these mailboxes <laughs> you could stick in the, in the ground. You know, I, I, I felt that, man, and this is, and this is something that's, that's serious. I felt like one time 
Well, not one time. I still don't have grass that grows in my front yard at my hometown house. I right. still don't because I felt like somebody poison my grass yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying like I, I, rv I, uptight yeah you know what I'm he's like, the guy that yeah. poisoned the oaks at uh tumor's corner and you know that that i don't want to i don't want to blame harvey or anybody but i believe like something happened like how does my grass just stop stop growing yeah, yeah. You know i think harvey got you and, on and, yeah. I, and i smell i smell gasoline yeah you know when i got home like me and my dad we talked we talk about this my grandmother working at uh she worked at uab medical west got rest her soul um and she was an avid alabama fan and uh, like fans would send my grandmother my grandmother hate mail. My grandma, you going that grandma? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just because her grandson ain't going to Alabama, you know, like that is the stuff that you that you go through, and it build it. What it, what it does is like a. I read this book called uh, "Callous on My Soul" by Dick Gregory, uh, and it, it just basically a, a, a biopic of his life and some of the things that he went through, and you know, some of the influential people that he was with. Uh, but what he talks about, basically, the premises. That all of these things that he went through, you know, they built the callus. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people look at calluses as like, you know, oh, I got a callus on my hand, but what is what is that? Is it's building another layer. Yeah. Is is making that area stronger. You know what I'm saying? So all these things that I that I went through, it made it made me stronger. So same with Jimbo. Jimbo, you know, Ethan, his, his son was, you know, going going through a lot with Fanconi anemia. You know, uh, all the things that he does with the Kids First Foundation. Yeah. Uh, so you just think about the level of of um. A perseverance that you have to have every single day because you're looking in your son's eyes and seeing the pain that he's going through, right? And you have to claim, you know, a hundred and other, hundred and ten other kids as your son, right? Because you have to lead uh, a, a a university like Florida State after Bobby Bowden, oh, under Nick Saban. So you're like, man, I want something for myself. Yeah. So that connection they had, really, the biggest thing he did was his best friend was Mike uh, Martin Jr. You know, uh, the the son of Mike Martin, the legendary uh, coach. Uh, shout out to to me and uh, yeah. and eleven. Mm -hmm. But they had a meeting with me. That's a big that's a big thing. Your your football coach, man. You believe in me a much? You gonna let me play baseball? You gonna say that the baseball coach is your best friend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we sitting there eating together, breaking bread together, so I get to talk football and baseball. Yeah. Like what what are, what do I want? What what did I want to accomplish in college? I wanted to win a, a national championship, right? And if I could do that in football and baseball, yes, I'm going to Florida State. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. They're the only ones that said that you could play baseball, right? Well, it, it, LSU, they said that I, I could play baseball. Uh, Alabama actually said that I could play baseball. Al Alabama, I, I, I really felt like the recruitment that I had at Alabama probably helped their baseball program uh, a little bit because they like after they didn't get me, they start building these big baseball facilities and stuff like that. And I'm just going to hold that to heart. I'm going to say it was because of me. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah, no, that was because of you. Uh, yeah, should name the stadium after. Yeah, yeah the only yeah. The, the only team that said that I couldn't play baseball was Florida. Oh, the Florida Gators. And I get, I'm gonna give y'all a quick story. I went to Friday Night Lights. It was like a camp at Florida. It was me, uh, a guy named uh, Zeke Pike, uh, who's uh, who was, was an amazing guy, and I just love how his life has changed and how he's uh, serving the Lord and just doing great things uh, in the community. Uh, shout out to Zeke, but. We were there competing, and uh, who, I, I forgot I forgot who it was, uh, uh, who was the offensive coordinator. But anyways, I'm at Florida, right? And we on, like, this recruiting trip. And, man, I win the MVP of the camp. I show out. You know what I'm saying? I walk up to, uh, you know, that's probably why I don't know his name because he didn't. He told me that I couldn't play. But this is the offensive coordinator of the Florida Gators. This ain't even the head coach. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even talking to the head coach. The offensive coordinator told me, you know, you, you ain't going to be able to play baseball here. And I said, oh, I said, okay. I said, well, I probably won't go here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like literally yeah. like the Florida years, like when you think about a, a kid from Alabama, like I'm thinking like, okay, one of my, one of my guys was uh, like, I looked at, you know, we had Jamarcus Russell, we had Pat White, we had um, Phillip Rivers. And these are Alabama quarterbacks that did not go to an Alabama school. So you have these people and you just look at the course of, of what they've achieved in their life. And Pat White, like he did great things at West Virginia. Yeah. Phil Rivers, like he's a Hall of Fame quarterback, you know, one day. And Jamarcus Russell, he was the number one pick, you know. So uh, he did some great things at LSU, won a national championship there. Uh, well, did he, no, he didn't he, win a national He beat, uh, I think he beat Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did some great yeah. things uh, at LSU. So I was like, man, I'm going to take this chance, you know. And at this time, this was when Alabama was the traditional pro-style offense where their quarterback really wasn't making an impact 
on their team. They were surrounded by great talent and uh, and a great defense. So the opportunity to go to Florida State, team up with Jimbo, who's an offensive mind, and be around those players and dominate and go against the, the SEC. Do you know how great it was? And it was crazy. It was great to be Auburn in the national championship. Yeah, yeah. And one, it's an SEC team. I wish it would have been Alabama. That would have been, you know, that probably gave me a little bit more street cred. Yeah, uh, it would have burned more of your grass. In, in the yeah. state. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole house part would have been gone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But funny story about, about Auburn. And this is just the, the, really, this is the mindset that people in Alabama have when it comes to their football teams. I just won the Heisman, and I'm walking, I'm, Walking in the grocery store, me and my my friend, one of my best friends, Tanner Tanner Brown, we're walking in like a Dillard's or something, and uh, and this nice nice old lady comes up and he's like, hey, like, don't I know you from somewhere? You know that happens a lot. And I was like, I was like, you know, maybe like, how are you? Like, do you need any help? Like, because this is a, you know, this is an old lady. You know, uh, she's like, no, 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 I'm I'm good. She's like, Nick Marshall, right? <laughs> And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Nick Marshall. Like, and I'm like, it's nothing against Nick Marshall, but I play for Florida State. I don't have on orange. Oh, listen, I'm at the mall. I don't have on orange and blue. Yeah. I, I, I promise you. I got on regular clothes, so I, I, I can get it. But I don't look nothing like Nick Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And, like, for, for, for her to attach, like, when, when you're Alabama, you attach greatness with – if you go into Alabama, Auburn, Auburn, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, like so, uh, I I missed out on that. So I'm sorry to all my Alabama people that I didn't go to. <laughs> what what know. year was uh, the camp? Because I, I just looked it up. It's either Steve Adazio or it might have been Charlie Weiss who told you you can't play baseball. So I think Charlie Weiss was the head coach. Look, look, it Will was, no, he was offensive coordinator for Will Muschamp. Okay, no, this was uh this was twenty this was twenty uh twenty ten. Okay, so it was Steve Adazio. Be a dude. Not Steve Adazio. It was okay. not, he. This guy ended up going to to Auburn to be the uh, office coordinator at Auburn too. Big mistake by him. Massive. Big huge. mistake by him. Yes, it was a huge. But but it wasn't Steve Adazio. Uh, it, look what what was the quarterback coach's name? I'm gonna look it up right uh, now. Remember that that uh, Auburn Natty? That was on your birthday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You won the national championship on your birthday. Yes. If I were you, I wouldn't believe in luck either. Like that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't feel like luck. That feels like. It was. It was. It was supposed to happen. It's supposed to happen. You know, before before the national championship game. You know, when you are on that high stage, like uh, a lot of people try to contact you and uh, have conversation, build relationships with you. And there were there were two people that uh, I was able to build a relationship with during that time. Uh, one of those people was was Bo Jackson. Mm-hmm. All right, and I'm gonna tell you about Bo Jackson. And another of those people were literally just a uh, literally two day, well, one day relationship with this person. Uh, because he got he got back to me and really my wife and that was Eric Thomas, uh, Eric Thomas man literally called him while, while I was out in L.A. Uh, he reached out to me man and prayed for me, gave me some words of wisdom and like and that was basically all the motivation I needed to go out there and lead the troops. Yeah, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you you get a call from Eric Thomas and like just what he stands for, the motivation that he's been inspiring me and my wife, well now wife, but my girlfriend at the time, our whole life. Like so shout out to ET and the work that he's doing. But Bo Jackson. Yeah. Bo Jackson, okay. Auburn guy. Auburn guy. By the way, the guy was Scott Loeffler. Scott Loeffler. We'll leave him alone. It was Scott yeah. Loeffler. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly who it was. <laughs> it was Scott Loeffler. And he ended up going to Auburn. Yeah, he did the yeah. next year. So let's talk about Bo Jackson. Yeah. One there, there are two people from Bessemer, Alabama, that are uh, that I would see made me and inspired me to be who. I, and one is D'Amico Rhines. Uh, he yes. he actually was my first uh, signed football. Oh you know, yeah, my uncle had coached him in high school. Really coached him from little league all the way up. So uh, shout out to D'Amico in in Houston, uh, what he's doing there, and uh, Bo Jackson. Uh, both of them from Bessemer. Bo Jackson is from Bessemer, Alabama. I've met D'Amico. I talked to him and Kerry Rose too. I don't want to leave him out. But uh, the first time I talked to Bo Jackson was after I won the Heisman. And you're from Bessemer, mm-hmm. Alabama. Now I know he, he lived in Chicago and all that. But he was calling me and like he was like, "Hey, you know what's up, uh, Jabo?" And I was like, "That ain't my, that ain't my name." <laughs> I, I told him like, what, "What's up, uh, Jameson?" And I was like, that's, "That's not my name." Uh, but I'm, I'm grateful to be talking to you, man. This man, man, he called me. I don't know what booster from Auburn was in his pocket or in his ear, but he would call me at all times of the night. Like wanting to talk, saying like, "Hey, this this Uncle Bo, you know what I'm saying? Like, just calling to check in on you." I'm like, 
Uncle Bo, like, I ain't talked to you in my whole life, and I'm from your Mac, I'm from your neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You calling me right before the national championship game. And listen, <laughs> when is the next time I talk to Bo Jackson? After the national championship? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> like after the national championship game, I didn't hear from him again. Yeah. Next time I heard from him was at a at a Panini signing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like say, hey, what's up, Uncle? How you Mo? beat him? Yeah. Like, how you yeah. How you that's doing? how they do it at SEC you know? football. But, it's but, trying to get when, in your head a little when bit. When I look when I look back at it, I was like, well, you know, I I kind of give credit to Uncle Bo because like he he was really he was doing everything he yeah. could for Arbor. Yeah, like, he knew I loved him. Yeah. he gonna call me at all times of the night, waking you up, make, yeah. inspiring me to whoop his team even more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Oh <laughs> so my god, that was gosh. that was so funny, man. I, I so shout out to Bo Jackson. One, just the base him. D'Amico was a great baseball player too in high school. Like so, you got those two people from your same city. And I ain't talking about like I ain't talking about like uh you know a suburban area or like on the outskirts. Like man, we are from the same city. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We probably were born at the same hospital. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. And you got two people that probably, like how can you not be inspired to be your best self when you got two people that already paid the foundation for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe That's the great. maybe the best athlete of all time in Bo Jackson. Yeah. You, like who, who, talk about a baseball and a football player. Yeah. Like you know, like the only person you can say is Prime. Yeah, Dion. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. That's the only person you can put in that. Yeah, oh, to be that good yeah. at both. Um, I got uh, or Charlie Ward because he hooped. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. true. That, that's that's, true. that's the crazy thing about Charlie Ward, where people don't give him enough respect. He won the Heisman Trophy and didn't get drafted. Yeah, yeah, he played yeah, in the NBA. It's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> He'd get drafted. Oh, today. but hold on, yeah. but still got drafted in the first round. Yeah, in the NBA. Okay, yeah. come on now. Yeah, Th think about that. That's incredible. Think that about, really is. Think about what Pat White would have been in today's. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. You have all these quarterbacks that were ahead of their time. It's true. You know what I'm saying? But didn't get the opportunity because of other things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't know yeah. why. What was the guy's name? He played Florida State uh, role. Was it Myron? Role? Myron Roll. Yeah. So he he was an elite athlete. And then what, what's he now, like a heart surgeon? Yeah. Yeah, he's a surgeon. And I, I believe he's actually a um, – he's a government official uh, in um, – is it is it Panama? What what? Uh, it, not, it's not Panama, but some. Wait, wait. He was in Boston. That, uh, he, he was there. Uh, he was he was there, but he he was a government official from his native uh, his native uh country, Bahamas? the Bahamas. Yeah, I think it, what, what I th did he I think I thought he did some work in, in the Bahamas. I think so too. Yeah, he's, he's a neurosurgeon. Yeah, he's yeah. a great player too. Yeah, yeah, he's unbelievable. Really, really good. Yeah, uh, we play this game with everybody that comes on the show. Okay. I've uh I've got four cities just random cities and you tell me which one you like the best which one you could maybe see yourself living in um seattle atlanta washington dc and foxborough massachusetts <laughs> just four random random cities, random cities totally random which one of those cities yeah, uh, <laughs> i mean they sound random yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah they're very random. oh in denver. in denver in denver yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was waiting for that one yeah uh, -huh. uh random you know anyone that accepts me yeah uh-huh you know, but i would just say this Atlanta, I grew up an hour and a half from Atlanta. Like I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. You know, I think that would be that would be a beautiful time for just my family. Um, the accessibility that it have for my you know other family, my surrounding family, uh, that would be beautiful. But uh, I feel like I'm the I'm the attraction. I'm the I'm the thing. Like I'm the city that is gonna bring you know uh, joy love, trust, peace, integrity to any location that I'm at because I'm a man of increase. Yes, right? I like so, that. So, I am the city. Yeah. So that's powerful. Yes. It, it really is. It yeah. really is. So wherever it may be, uh, that city is going to be getting someone uh, that is ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, a kingdom man that is prepared to to grow everyone around them. I want to sign you right now. Yeah. That's inspiring. <laughs> I, I'm, I am inspired. Yeah. Right now. Um all right. I I have an awkward question, but I have to ask it because our fans would be very upset if I didn't. Yes. Jameis one of one. The Twitter handle. Yes. Are you familiar? I, I am. He's a very big fan. He is. He loves you. Yeah. <laughs> very big That's fan. it. I he just loves you. Mm -hmm. Is it good to have a rider like that? Because he loves it, you. Like, and that's what I mean. Like, it's some stuff that's just not luck. When, yeah. When you have someone like, when I never met the guy. You know, never been on the phone with the guy. Her husband wrote a book with him. 
Yeah. <laughs> and like forward a book with them. And like, and I never had any interaction with them. So when God sent you an angel like that, that like, man, this man be backing me. Yes. Like, and my dad, like, he the one that be retweeting. You know, like <laughs> I'm not I'm not as active on, you know, on on social media, yeah. but like I'm gonna look at my dad. Like, uh, like uh-huh. you retweeting this, like, cause he don't know nothing about no Twitter. My dad called Twitter Twitter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, you know, I, Hope, like luckily it's X now, so yeah. you can't mess that up. Yeah. You know, like it was it was amazing to see because when this book came out, my trainer, like we training, like we preparing. I didn't know he's for a book. And then the book come out, and now I got people asking me, like, hey, is this Jameis's burner account? Yes. And like, like, first of all, I don't I don't have the time, you know, to represent myself like that on a social media uh base like mm-hmm. if i'm gonna represent myself i'm gonna do that in between the lines yes you know uh but i i, I just view it as you know an angel in disguise yeah and i'm grateful for Jameis one-on-one and wherever you at uh, i appreciate like he sent me emails emails of, of, of encouragement sometimes he'll, he'll shoot to me like like you he, he will send me random cities you know yeah. that i need to be, <laughs> be, contem- be contemplating on you know what i'm saying and, he, and he'll have everybody on the uh on the line he'll have Nadia on the on the uh cc's i'm just like uh-huh. okay like thank you you know yeah he, he rides and and for people who are unfamiliar uh, it, you can buy the book on Amazon. I, I own the book. It it's Jameis Winston Derangement Syndrome, How Media Bias Causes Us to Overlook the Start of a Hall of Fame NFL Career. It's great. It's a great Thank book. You. Thank you. It's. I mean, he rides for you. I need a Jameis one-of-one. I need a guy who's just riding for me. We, we all do. Yeah. We all need those people that just got our back, you know, unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, he gets in the he gets in the corners of the internet, and he just fights. He, he, <laughs> he has stats that I've never seen before. Yeah. Right. I'm like, grateful for him. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to take him to a negotiating meeting. Yeah, <laughs> serious. I mean, he'll he'll pull up your best at. I, he actually probably should put together some some pamphlets for you when I'm you're hitting the free sure agent. They're ready. He had the, oh yeah, no, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to put them together. Yeah, He's I remember sleeping on them. So um, the last season that you did play and you played to like your fullest extent or before the injury, you had what 14 touchdowns, three interceptions in New Orleans. Hmm. Like you can play, you can still start, and I hope that another team sees that and brings a city to their city because the NFL is more fun when Jameis Winston is a starting quarterback. That's a fact. Like, for sure. Do you have um do you have a a game or a single drive or throw that you look back on and you're like, I played that that to me is my calling card. Like this is what I can bring to you. Um I, it's it's a it's a number of games um that I that just come to mind the, the game in the LA Coliseum uh, against the Rams. Uh my my rookie year against uh, Philly, or uh, uh, I tied the rookie record for touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Philly was my favorite team growing up. Uh, ironically, Andy Reid, I just loved him. And big Donovan McNabb. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, But I, I don't I don't really feel like I played my best best game yet. You know, like I'm I'm such a in the moment type of person. Like I'm 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 starving for that chance to to do it again. You know, and I think uh, when you look back on my career and when you look back on certain games, like, just like, you know, the the final play is, is behind me. Like, what's, yeah. what's next? Mm-hmm. You know, what can I create next? Like, who can I bring George to next? You know, it's like, how high can I go? Like, if I'm sitting here, like, first of all, I'm grateful for all my experiences. I'm grateful for those games that I did that have been, uh, the LA game was really fun uh, just because that was my second time uh, being – Third time being back in LA after uh, we lost to Oregon, so I really wanted that game, you know what I'm saying, uh, against the Rams in uh, 2019. Uh, but this is this is what I do. Like this is not who I am, but this is this is what I do. Like it's my passion to go out there and bombs on Baghdad, you know, throw five touchdowns, you know what I'm saying, and and lead that Super Bowl winning drive with uh, 13 seconds or uh, a minute and 13 seconds on the clock. Like that is, that's what I've been trained to do. And trust me, it ain't gonna be by coincidence when I'm in that opportunity again. Yeah. When when I'm when I'm awarded with that opportunity again. So I hope you get in that opportunity. Yeah. We'll play this clip and we'll go mega viral. Absolutely. I'm gonna get yeah. I'm, like he goosebumps. saw it all. Yeah. 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 So one thing that's it's pretty clear about you, you believe in yourself and mm-hmm. you you have that internal confidence and you know what you can accomplish. What was it like kind of taking a step back and and consciously saying, I am willing to be a backup quarterback? Yeah. Because you don't you don't talk like a backup quarterback. Right. You you have that faith in yourself. You're ready to be the guy. 
what was it like a, an adjustment period that you had to deal with in New Orleans where you had to dial it back? Were you just like, if I'm going to be a, a backup quarterback, I'm going to be the best backup quarterback that the league's ever seen? Yeah. Well, well, that faith in myself comes from my resilient faith in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's where that comes in. And I know and I trust in Him. You know, Proverbs 3 5 says, Trust in the Lord with your whole heart and lean not into your own understanding. Right. So I trust in him wholeheartedly. And no matter what, again, what, no matter what condition, circumstances or facts there are surrounding who I am or what I do. Right. That does not define me. You know, I don't I don't let anyone else or anything define what my next move is of who I'm going to be or what I'm going to accomplish. So. But I would have to say my first opportunity to be a backup quarterback was a very great gig mm -hmm. uh and, and i and i give a lot of credit to sean payton uh for this because i, I think that was a year where it was kind of back to college where i had to make a decision for you know my career for where i would go and that decision came clear when i talked on the phone with sean payton and uh got a chance to work with drew Brees. like again this is a guy that i, I looked up to you know uh got a chance to meet a couple couple times out in san diego uh just through a, a church rock rock church uh, uh, Pastor Miles McPherson had uh, George Whitfield actually one of my uh, old quarterback coaches he had set up uh, a meeting with Pastor Miles McPherson in San Diego and Drew Brees was the guest speaker one day and I got a chance to meet him out there so that was amazing but anyways being able to work with Sean who is a, a fearless passionate competitor who who really like Drew was the Hall of Fame face the Hall of Fame quarterback and uh, the resilient surgical player but Sean that was Sean Payton's culture at New Orleans, at New Orleans Saints that was that was that team was a reflection of who he is the tenacity like he was Sean Payton was he was the man of the city like he's the one that embraced the culture of New Orleans and he gave that to me you know uh I, I remember a story with Sean with and I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna get to the to the backup. You know, I don't like talking about being a backup because I don't like I don't like that place. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even though I cherish every place that I'm in. Right. You know. But Sean, man, we we uh about to be in the airport, uh, and it was doing uh it was doing COVID, right? Uh, hurricane just came, so we're leaving uh, through uh not privately, not you know like not charter, but like a regular airport. Like we checking in through. Uh, MSY in New Orleans and it's a fan you know right there and you know he's asking for an autograph you know I got my headphones on I can't hear and, and Sean tells the fan get out of here he's not finna sign your autograph like and he kind of shoes the guys off but he looks at me he's like we're not here to kiss any babies <laughs> I, I don't want you I don't want you here to be a politician I want you here to be a quarterback and and that that stuck with me because that's that's how Drew approached the game. Drew wasn't Drew wasn't in it to you know be liked by everyone. Drew had a chip on his shoulder because you know one team didn't believe in him. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think he literally did have a chip on his yeah. shoulder. Yeah, he did. Yeah. The MRI literally. shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally, he had a, a real chip on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. But one team didn't believe him, so he was gonna make his next opportunity. You know, the spot, and that's what he did. So being able to be in that building. And I just had one year with him, but be able to serve Drew Brees. Like, that's what people don't look. Like, I served Drew Brees for a year. You know what I'm saying? I, I saw him getting banged up and having to overcome things and, you know, send, sending him plays and sending him suggestions. Like, this Drew Brees. Like, Drew looking at me like this. Like, come on, James. Like, you know, I, I don't really don't need your help. I'm talking in means and, like, every times where he'll just peek down, down there. I'm just like, okay, let me be quiet, you know? <laughs> like, but this is like, that's the love that I, even Drew Brees is in the room, and I got love for this game. That I'm I'm willing to 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 say something in front of Drew Brees, like so. I, I think again, I've played every role that a quarterback could play uh, to an organization. Uh, however, I embrace every opportunity that I get. But my my desire and my passion is being a Super Bowl winning quarterback, and you win Super Bowls by being starting quarterback you know that's that's when they 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 deem you as a super bowl winning quarterback when you are starting mm -hmm. you know uh even if it's just that game yep you know that's a super bowl they're not gonna say you know the backup quarterback they're like oh he won a super bowl super bowl champion yeah. no super bowl winning quarterback you know yeah doug williams yeah
Doug yeah, Williams came on, in bro. as a, off the bench. Yo, yeah, but I, I didn't put Doug Williams because he was the first. He was yeah. the first African American quarterback. That was that was a that was a, he broke barriers. Mm-hmm. His resilience, and I was blessed because DJ Williams was a, a quarterback coach at uh, at the Saints. Yeah, and and, and Doug worked in uh, Tampa Bay. Doug, right? Doug yeah. worked in Tampa Bay. Yes, but that's that's barriers, right? Like so, when you achieve something like that, like I got the vision, like I've already seen it happen. Yeah, because mm-hmm. because obviously he was a starter, you know, and then obviously the the next season he was a starter the year, the year before, yeah. and the next season, you know, some things had happened. But when his opportunity presented himself, he's just not a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He's a Super Bowl MVP, and he dominated that quarterback. Game. Yeah, yes, dominant. Yeah, he, it was it was unbelievable. So shout out to Doug Williams and thank you for paving the way. For all young African American quarterbacks, yes, dreaming to do what you did, yes, yeah. When you were coming up, did you ever like playing ball when you were a kid? Were you? Did any coach try to be like, I don't know if you're going to play quarterback? Like, can you try running the ball? Like being a wide receiver, did you fall into that at all? Or at the time, was it like you were so talented that they were like, yeah, Jameis is going to be the quarterback no matter what? Well, uh, when I got to when I got to Hewitt Town, my my high school, uh, I started as a freshman, right, but. I was competing against uh, an upperclassman that was at quarterback, and we had a uh, we had a good relationship. His name was Wayne Carroll, and he ended up going to receiver, and like almost was all state in receiver. Mm-hmm. So I I've never been in a situation where a quarterback told me like, "Hey, you gonna play a different position?" And I have played some cornerback and some some linebacker. What in was my, that like? My, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm a football player. Yeah, I'm just like, yes. Like, like I want to be a Super Bowl winner, but I'm a football player. Yeah. At heart, you know, so uh, that that's always fun. But yeah. no, Wayne Carroll, his selflessness to go and be my best receiver that year, it just gave me. I feel like it gave me a mind shift because, like, it's like the tables have turned. Like I was the first African American quarterback at my high school, you know. Uh, so that was kind of a, a unique feeling. That was a lot of pressure as a as a as a ninth grader uh, being in this this rule. Uh, city in uh in in alabama uh but i think that situation gave me perspective because i'm like okay like the tables have turned but this guy he didn't he didn't complain like yeah I, like we we got into a we got into a a lot you know uh but just because he was an alpha too and i was an alpha but he did his job you know and and what 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 did my dad teach me when i like from Lily, like hey, no matter what, where the coach push you, this is a big baseball saying. No matter what, where the coach push you, you go out there and you do your best. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like, I continue to carry those values. Yeah, uh, up until now. So yeah. Wayne Carroll was a white guy. Yeah, that's a beautiful moment for America. Yeah, rural Alabama, <laughs> yeah. white quarterback. He was, a, he was a he was a redhead white guy. Redheaded, oh, you know what I'm red, really white guy. Yeah, yes. and they said, you know what, you look more like an athlete. I'd like you to go play wide receiver. Yes. We're gonna put Jameis Winston. That's beautiful. That quarterback. That's That's yeah. Run, 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 look, running a wing T. Yeah. R.I.P. Wow. Racism. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Right? No, you right know, uh, but, but Wayne's the man. Yeah. Uh, Can we talk about eating a dub? Yes. Let's talk about it. Oh, you brought. You got one up there. That looks good. That looks like a good dub. Want to eat I it? Put it in the oven a little bit more. <laughs> Not when done. you did that, uh, well, we've talked to Cam Jordan about it. We talked to some other uh, teammates of yours, and they're like, "It's Jameis. It's Jameis." Like. It, from the outside world being like, oh, that's weird. Like, we all love Jameis. It inspired us. Mm-hmm. How long have you been eating dubs? I've been eating W's, uh, you know, since the beginning. Uh, it, it started a long, long time ago, and that's because my last name is W. And the, f- four, the first four letters of my last name spells out wins. Yep. So fact check me. It's probably yeah. right on Wikipedia. <laughs> um, I'll but, be damned. But I've been yeah. – it, it all stemmed from uh, one of my one of my favorite – uh, motivational speeches, um, and it and it all surrounds about you know a bowl of um, do y'all remember the soup, the alphabet soup? Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Of so course. I always just talk about like, hey, we scraping the bowl today. We scraping. We eating up. We eating up everything, right? And we only looking for dubs <laughs> in the alphabet soup. <laughs> There's a lot of different options out there, but we looking for W's. We eating all the W's <laughs> in the alphabet soup. But this one game, like ironically. You know the the true thing happened in New Orleans. Like it was at New Orleans, where and we lost the game. Uh, that's why 
you know, I'm still selling E W T shirts. You know what I'm saying? Yes. We've been way bigger. We'd have won the game. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's why winning is so important. Yeah. Winning defines everything. And you two are winning in what y'all do. And I, I am Appreciate too. It. I'm winning in life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just gotta get, get get I will be getting more wins on the football field. But anyways, E to W. <laughs> I'm talking, you know, and, and I'm inspiring the guys like, hey, like what are we eating today? Like I already had the alphabet soup conversation early in the year. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Put it in their head. Yeah, yeah. and we ate the W. I was like, what are we eating? I was like, we're eating W's. Like, what this is? You know what I'm saying? It's a Mm -hmm. W. We eating that W. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I took the W out the soup. I already had the W ready and prepared. Yeah. (laughs) I think it went it went left when I started actually eating the W. Yes, I agree. And when I ate the real W Uh and then proceeded to dap up Deshaun Jackson. Yeah. (laughs) I think that was the worst person to dap up. (laughs) Because Deshaun from Cali, he already a Hall of Famer. First, he don't got no time for no eat the W's. He just, he looking like, give me some touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> give me the ball, Jameis. Like, hey, worry about no eat the W. And when I tried to dap him up, in the eye contact we made, <laughs> doing that, I think it was a powerful speech. It really it was. was. Yeah. Man, I was banged up. You know, I had a grade three AC sprain. You know, I'm, I'm going in, I'm fighting, I'm fighting that. Like, and, and, and we've been losing. I'm just, I'm, how are we going to wheel this team to get a win in the Superdome? My, my, first, my first NFL win was against Drew Brees and beating the Saints in the Superdome. So I'm just like, I got good vibes here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we didn't win that game. But <laughs> I felt it was powerful. Yeah. Like, when you think about, like, what is, what is eating a W? You know, it's just, it's just winning. Yeah. It's, it's doing something to, uh, to push you towards what you want to accomplish. Like, and that, and like, and that's, and that's what sometimes it can get, uh, misconstrued about me that, you know, that I'm, I'm a jokester, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm goofy. Like, no, I'm just, I'm just all in. Like, I'm all in for the people that I work with every single day. I'm all in for my brothers, my sisters. Like, man, you know, I'm, I'm having conversations with the janitor. You know what I'm saying? I'm having, I'm having conversations with the lunch ladies. Like, this is not just, you know, that's my family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, we, we put in too much work not to enjoy what we do and not to express how we feel. Yeah. I think that's a lot of things. Like, a lot of people want to express things with their thumbs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people want to express things from a facade, like from from a story that 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 you know probably got a green screen behind yeah. them. No one wants to express their feelings out loud. No, no, we we we're, we're lacking genuine people, like they really speak their truth and have no explanation for it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't have to explain to you why why I said this. I don't have to explain to you why I did this. Trust that it came from great intentions of my heart and trust that with all seven, no, I got your back because again, I, what I want for myself, I want for you. Yeah. So if I'm all in, I want you to be all in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I that's, love that. That's a leader, right? Yeah. There. I'm ready to eat a dub right yeah, now. Yeah, that no, is a leader. It, it is. It is fair to point out that that was the, the sequel to the alphabet soup W. Yes. We kind of just jumped in and all we had with no context. Yeah. Just eat the W, Everyone but it, it was like that. It's like trying to jump into a second movie without seeing the first one. You're right. not gonna understand what goes on behind the scenes. Like when, when we when we make our ad commercial for our eat the W uh, <laughs> shirts, it's gonna start off with just you know a bowl of soup, and it's gonna be a W just floating in the middle mm-hmm. by itself. <laughs> just you know, scooping so, up. and then like I'm gonna come out of the soup and just like, <laughs> eat the W, <laughs> and then slide back in the soup, <laughs> and then it's gonna come on. It's gonna say. Eat a W <laughs> on the top. You know I mean, I, every other time I eat, eat alphabet soup from now on, I'm just going to eat the W's you out. Just, W's only. Only. Why, why would you eat anything else? Imagine touching an L. <laughs> no. Oh, suck man. that thing. That's, that's yeah. sucker shit. Uh, you're vegan now. <laughs> so, are W's vegan? So I've been. Oh. There, there are a couple vegan W's. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Uh, so I, I always, um, I got this from Indominus Sue we're just challenging my body and trying different diets uh, in the course of an off season. Um, so this one time, uh, literally the year after uh, the, was it the COVID year, uh, not a year? Was it, what, what year was it? Uh, was it 2020 where I, I went full vegan for, for six months and that was very challenging uh, being a, a Southern boy from Alabama. Uh, it was challenging, but it was very beneficial. I, I, I went from 250 to 207 in a matter of eight weeks. Wow. Right. And it just was me eating great food, uh, losing a lot of just bad weight. Um, but it was painful because I love, I love, I love yeah. to eat, I love to eat yeah. meat and I, I love to eat good. Um, but I think anything that you can do to, again, increase 
your your where is status, your your health, uh, your brain function to be the best that you can be. You have to do it. So uh, I'm I'm thankful that and I'm consumed. You know, he put me on you know blood work. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know anything about about blood work. You know, I just thought like you get a, a regular ch- checkup. You know, like now I'm I'm getting blood work and they got you know. 18 to 50 tubes of, of blood bench. I'm like, I don't think I have enough blood to suck. <laughs> you know, but it's just, you always are, are thankful for uh, new and, uh, and prosperous uh, ideas or recommendations to, to better yourself. Yeah, that's smart. Mm-hmm. I, I, I should go vegan. It'd be lost that much weight. Yeah. impossible to be a vegan in New Orleans, I would think. Just the food down there is just it, so good. It's so challenging, but you don't understand, like, like when you have the plant based diet, you don't understand how much animal fat or animal substances are in just every regular yeah. vegetarian meals. Like it's in it's in everything. So uh, I, I went the easier route and I just did fruit and salads and uh, just a variety of uh, of like uh, walnuts, Brazil nuts, pine nuts, like thing, things in that that nature to just yeah. help me, you know, not even have to worry about uh, all the the ends and now so like is this vegan like yeah like i didn't want to be i think that's probably why i lost so much weight right because i, I pro- was i eating enough like i have no idea i just know that my my energy felt the same every single day i know that i was moving uh better than ever uh and i was skinny you know i lost my gut so i was proud of that you yeah know but, yeah but when it came to you know when it came to moving in that pocket and breaking tackles and I was just like, yeah, let me, let me go and eat me a nice steak. Or yeah, yeah, you got to get your weight up a little bit. Yeah. If you yeah. were, to, if you were to have like one last meal in New Orleans, what would it be? Uh, well, I have an amazing chef, uh, uh, Chef Tatiana and uh, Chef Jewel Robinson. Uh, they are um, Chef Jewel is the mother of uh, famous chef Chef uh, Kwame uh, Onwache who owns Tatiana's in New York, and it was rated the number one restaurant uh, yeah. in the country last year and top 50 in the world. Is that Nigerian food? Uh, it's, uh, so it's really, um, it's, is it Pan American? It's, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of Caribbean uh, and, and, and African, but he, he's like, what, what, what is his, I think, I think he's, uh, is he Nigerian? I remember I read an article his, about him. His, and his, dad, his, dad, his dad is fantastic. Nigerian, so it's it's really like a mix of Cajun. It's it's really like, uh, it's really a mix of everything that he's been through. Uh, because uh, Chef told me a story how she sent him to live. Was it Africa or what? What was it? Yeah, she sent him to live in Africa. Like so, he understood. Like I think was it the granddad was a chef. So his granddad was a chef and a, a popular chef, and that's and that was his mom's dad, right? So it just ran in the family. So he basically took, uh, it, like, let's think of gumbo as a like he took African cuisine, he took New Orleans cuisine, he took LA cuisine, and just made it all into his own thing. I, I have his cookbook. I, I I had to send it to y'all, yeah, uh, just to to get the term of like the type of cuisine is here. But I know one thing. It's delicious. Yeah. Right. So no matter what type of cuisine this is, it's amazing. Yeah. Right. So my favorite meal would be probably something from Tatiana's. Uh, my chef, her name is actually Tatiana, and he named it uh, after her. Uh, and he has an amazing uh, short rib there. Uh, is it what, what? What is the name of the short rib? Like it's like, it's like <laughs> just like falls sounds apart. very it, good. It, yeah. It's it's it's, unbe- it's unbelievable. Yeah. Like in the vibe there, it's right there in the Lincoln Center. And like it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, so we got a couple last questions. It's been unbelievable, Jameis. We you're you're an all time vibes guy. You really are. Like it's just the, the vibes are high when you're when you're talking. Um so this one's from our good friend Stephen Che, who's a diehard Bucks fan. All right. Who uh this is actually a, a pretty detailed question, but he said uh he wanted to know you played with a lot of great players, but two guys that are constantly overlooked are Levante David and Demario Davis. Right. Who do you think is more underrated between the two of them? Levante David's been doing it forever. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know who's more underrated, but I know the caliber of men they both are. And I know both of them should be uh, and will be Hall of Famers. Uh, I feel like the most underrated player I play with, honestly, that people don't give enough respect to is Mike Evans. Oh, yes. I think, I think he's the person that flies up on the radar a lot. You know, uh, I feel like Levante uh, flew up on the radar, um, but I think – like literally, he's like fine wine. Him and Demario, the older that they get, the better that they have been playing. Yeah. And uh, and I just 
I'm grateful for the relationship that I have with DeMario and how he helped uh, increase me with my faith. Like he's just an unbelievable man, father and leader. And just being around him in New Orleans was really a, a treat uh, to my to my heart. Uh, with Levante, the competitor that he is and a man that he is, is like they're similar individuals, but the way that they approach the game and the way that they prepare is is unbelievable. So I'm just I'm grateful for Levante because he was kind of like one of the old heads that helped me in the league, helped me move around. Him and Jerry McCoy, uh, you know, were those pe those people that uh kind of took me on their wing. Jerry McCoy, Vincent Jackson, and Levante kind of took me on their wing and showed me, you know, how to be a pro. Like, what are the things that I need to be doing? Um, so I'm grateful for both of them. But like I said, the most underrated player that don't get enough respect uh, is Mike Evans. We've, we, we did a whole thing on it a couple weeks ago where it's like Mike Evans, if you look at it, he is going to be, if he plays five, six more years, he will be, it will be Mike Evans and like, Randy Moss and you know Jerry Rice and like T.O. and like this vaunted group of receivers that are just unassailable it's mm -hmm. like these are the top five guys and people don't give him enough credit yeah like a thousand yards every single year for he's been in the league for 10 years and you look at statistical things but when you look at the size the speed to bend how he's running these routes like how he's creating separation like he's doing it in a detailed, skilled way. He's not doing it because of his unique athletic ability or his talent. He's doing it because he trains in this way. You know, I really think he's doing it because if you ever looked at his toes, you would see how why, how powerful he was because his toes look like they just dig in the ground. Like, and I, I'm a feet guy because I wanted to be a podiatrist uh, when I when I grew up. Uh -huh. uh, it, I haven't achieved that yet, but it's probably, uh, probably, probably going to come. But anyway, like Mike... <laughs> Mike was just an amazing play, and you know I played with with, with Deshaun, uh, and I played with a, another excellent receiver, uh, uh, Mike Thomas. You know, those guys are both Mike Thomas and Deshaun. They're both Cali guys, you know, so they love the ball, right? Mike, he don't complain about nothing. Yeah, he don't, he don't, he don't give you no, no, no beef. You know what I'm saying? He's just a cool, laid back person. And that's gonna go to show up to work, do his job, and it's gonna it's gonna outdo everybody on the field. Yeah. yeah. Like he's just so he's so dominant that he doesn't get the respect that he deserves because like you said, like we we, we talk about the stats, but he's been doing this since he got in I the know. league. It's uh -huh. crazy. Since he's got and you don't and you you leave him off all pros, you leave him off pro bowls and stuff like that. I'm just like, man, like they the world, the NFL coaches don't know what they're missing with Mike Evans because you know that's I, those are the men that the NFL, you know, they they put on that they put on that pedestal. Those those great fathers, those great men. That the NFL man of the year. That's that's another uh, goal of mine. Like people that's giving back to their, their community, doing it silently, not looking for a pat on the back, but doing it because that's just who they are. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They will put. It ain't by coincidence that they like that either. Yeah, they 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 went through certain things in their life that inspired them and influenced them to be who they are. And uh, and I just – shout out to Mike, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting you brought up the pat, the fact that, like, Cali receivers like the ball. Can you describe, like, what's the difference between California receivers, uh, receivers from Texas, and maybe Florida-wide receivers? Uh, well, the, the, the Cali receivers, I feel like they, that they just um, – I feel like that they just – they are so influenced by the lifestyle in California, like they are born to be superstars, mm -hmm. right? So when they are put in a in a in an environment where they are the alphas and they are the stars, I think they're gonna they're gonna take full advantage of that responsibility. So I just think their thirst for wanting the ball, right? Whether it's, it's challenging times, feeling not like they're always open, even if they're uh, triple covered, uh, like I think that's always just gonna be something that that they yearn for. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas, man, I feel like Texas is, they're so, uh, I feel like the majority of Texas, they're so uh, lifted up through high school in their young days because of, uh, you know Texas everybody talk about Friday nights and t so so they are experiencing an NFL lifestyle in middle school mm -hmm. yeah you know what I'm saying that's just how big you know the stardom and the you, know, you think about Friday night lights and all that stuff. that's how big it is in Texas in middle school and high school they have a class for football during during school hours in middle like, school, yeah. middle school yeah. high school they have hot tubs saunas yeah uh, steam rooms and you know, yeah, 20, indoor, indoor, indoor facilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's crazy. We were in Dallas. Since they were 12. We were yeah. in Dallas, 
and uh I forget the uh, high school that we were, we were at, but uh, this is where Mark Cuban, Jerry Jones, uh, Sam, uh, not uh, Matt Stafford went here. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, uh, Highland Park. Park. Highland Park. Yeah, they got an indoor facility. Yeah, that looks better than our indoor facility. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, this is this is a, a high school yeah. in Texas. Yeah. You know? So uh, I think Texas receivers, they just I feel like they're they're different. But Mike is different. Mike is from from Galveston. I, I, I always I always tell this to people. And this is something that me and uh, my trainer talk about a lot. If you are born around water, like you have a different way of life. You function differently. And I just I just feel like you function differently because water, like water has no soul. You know, it doesn't discriminate against anybody. You get in that water, it's gonna take you wherever it goes. Yeah. So I feel like people that are around water, they they are very strong will. They're one with water. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Mike is from Galveston. If you've been to Galveston, Galveston is known for, you know, I don't know what they're known for because I'm not from there, but I know they have a beach. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's it's not a pretty beach. No, you they're know known for oil. There's <laughs> uh it, it's some of the dirtiest sand in America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it's not a pretty beach. So Mike is from that muck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It might be oil muck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's still muck. So uh so he he he's a little different. I don't I don't classify him as like the regular Texas receivers, the uh but C D Lamb is a Texas receiver. I know he had a dominating year. Yeah. Uh who who else is, is Brandon Cooks from Texas? Uh Brandon Cooks might be. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um and, and then Florida wide receivers. Florida Florida, I feel like, you know, and let me be impeccable with my words. Florida wide receivers are probably most um uh, one. When you in Florida and you play Robert, I think they're the most savviest receivers because I believe you ought to, like, it is so many Rob receiver coaches in the state of Florida mm -hmm. that are working. Like, you got you got a uh, route god, you know what I'm saying? You got Gold Feet Global, you know, and that's just that's just two people that I know that I work with. Route god, yeah, yeah, I yeah. like that. That, that. That's my dog, but they're they're working on their feet. Like, when you look at foot, they got like, da, da, da. they got some of this, they got some of that, but you know. I feel like all of them, you know, they need to get a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and and just and just share with them some of the things that they went through, uh, you know, from from I mean, I'm talking about probably from when when they were born, you know, they need to they need someone to talk to, yeah. you know, uh, and that's and that's how I view the Florida receivers. But I'm gonna tell you something about Florida, what people are like, and I'm pretty sure Cali's like this and other places. But the lower you go in Florida, the more you get out of Florida. <laughs> Tallahassee is South Alabama, South Georgia. So yeah. if you from like the Panama City, like the the Panhandle across, like you like an Alabama person, yeah. You know, like South Alabama, South Georgia. You know, I feel like Jacksonville, South Carolina, like all oh, that's the same. You know what I'm saying? You you a little wild, but you know what I'm saying? You Southern hospitality. You go down like Kenny Shaw, like is in Orlando, Kermit with like they're whole, they're whole different people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then. Kevin Benjamin, who's an hour south of Kennesaw, and he's from Bell Glade. Yeah. You know, he's completely different. Anquan Bolden, right, a, a little hour south of, of Bell Glade. Like, he's completely – like, these people are – they're just different. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm grateful. Honestly, I'm great. That's why I'm so happy I went to Florida State because I was able to build relationships with people that were just – they thought differently. They had different perspectives. And communicating with them, for us to win was a challenge. It really was because I'm a person where I'm for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes the, these players, they were for Orlando. They were for Bell Glade. They were for Fort Lauderdale. They were for Miami. You know what I'm saying? More than they were for for everybody. Just because they're so, I feel like Miami, Miami, oh, not Miami, but Florida, Florida players are so like, they, especially, well, specifically Miami, they run in clicks. Mm-hmm. Like, if you see one person from Miami, you're going to see 10 people from Miami, right? And those 10 people might be living in the same house. So when you go and knock on somebody's door saying, like, hey, like, we're going to go throw these routes, you know, on the field, you're going to have to say what's up to the cousin. you had to adopt up the auntie. You know what I'm saying? You're probably going to have to, you know, kick some Roman noodles because some kids are going to be running around, you know, before they come out and say they're ready to go throw. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, so I think they run in clicks because they're, 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 they function off of a lot of community. Uh, and I think Florida has a lot of – um, I, I would credit the 
the old heads in Florida. What, how, how am I defining old heads? I define old heads are people that have experienced high things. I think they do a good job of giving back to their kids yeah. in Florida. Yeah. Like you see the Ocho Cinco's out there working with the young guys. Like you see all the, the older people that have been there and done that, building up these young athletes that are soon to be what they are uh, one day. So I, th- I give that credit to Florida, but I would feel like Florida is definitely – the most confrontational uh, receiver mm-hmm. out of them all. But I, I believe that and, – and, and I don't – this is my opinion. I believe that Florida receivers have an entire different work ethic and grind than uh, receivers from other places. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so I have one last question, Jameis. It's the rowback question, com. Use promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts – Fleeces, vests, everything, Roback.com. I have to apologize for something. Um, so during COVID, when there was no sports, I started playing video games on NCAA 2014, I believe it was, the old one. Mm. And I'd started streaming it. People were watching. And I got the OC job at Florida State, and it was the last year that you were in the game. And I did have a game. I threw six interceptions with you. Yes. So I apologize. We did win the Fiesta Bowl, though. Yes. Okay. So you won throwing six interceptions? No, I don't think I won that game. I think I lost that game, but I wanted to apologize. Do you accept my apology? I threw six interceptions with you. No, I, I don't accept your apology, <laughs> but I'm grateful that you shared that with me. Okay, all right, uh, all right. That yeah. was a really nice way to say, why the fuck did you throw six interceptions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm very tough on myself. Yeah. You know, so... So uh, I think you you not you have to be able to laugh laugh at yourself, but you also got look yeah you got things that that you know you have to like eliminate from yeah. your energy yeah you know what that I'm game yeah and, it was the ACC championship game against and that's, Georgia Tech and that's what I'm saying okay so once you told me that I admit, I, once you said six yeah like, that's a number I, I believe I believe in numbers and then you said and, and I was like okay that's eliminated from my mind. <laughs> You know, so yeah, I, I like so so I don't forgive him. Okay, but I'm grateful that he shared that yeah. with me because now I'm gonna be able to process that and move forward. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. Great. But but I, I I feel good about moving on from this. I'm let, gonna eliminate it from my listen, mind as well. What about? Can we get another NCAA game? I know. Like I'm so like I'm so frustrated that playing Madden is so challenging. I know. Right now, I was like, I tell my brother all the time uh, because he's he's a young up and coming uh, athlete and he's gonna be a beast, Jonah Winston be sure like when i uh ret- make sure boss to boss to retweets my last uh highlight video that i put yes. up jonah winston yes yeah so uh i told my brother i, I wish i would have played madden more uh growing up and worn super bowls on madden and visualized that because i spent so much time winning heismans and <laughs> and, and winning championships on ncaa yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i didn't i didn't play enough madden yeah. you know what i'm saying like so now i'm going back and i'm i'm having to take my my rating down from all man to all pro and then i'm, I'm losing the all pro I'm like i'm not going to rookie you know what i'm saying <laughs> i gotta go to you know whatever the next one is like and i'm like i'm getting these wins but this doesn't feel real yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yes. and then i play my brother and he's 21 stomping me uh, <laughs> i'm asking you know you ask those questions like i mean when you pick your team like you you play on all man or you play on all pro <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm all bad. You know? I'm just like, okay. Man. How can I sneak this all pro? Yes. In? Do you, yes. Do you have yourself as a starting quarterback when you play Madden? Every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So you you have yourself starting. You play as the Saints. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jameis Winston starting, yeah. and you're trying to win a Super Bowl. I think you need to you need to just grind at it. The game has become a lot harder recently. Yeah. They made it oh, really the gra- tricky. The, but- grind, the grind has started. PFT. Okay. Yeah. Like, I like this that. is this is very intentional. Yeah. Of me earning a Super Bowl. Uh, like you gotta see it, yeah. Like no, I believe you, yeah. But you have, but you guys, even though, even though you you probably can't pinpoint the uh, um, the the time, but you you saw yourself being in this in this role. Mm-hmm. You visioned it somewhere, and I'm like, I'm a I'm a big like I I know the Lord has a vision for me, and I have to visualize what I want for myself. Like that is going to glorify his kingdom by visualizing what I want for myself to honor him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think in everything that you do, you got to find a way to, you got to find, got to find a way to experience that. And sometimes it might take six interceptions in college, you know, against Georgia Tech. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to eliminate that and go back to the next game and win the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I apologize again. I, I, it is, it was Georgia Tech. The Georgia Tech official account made fun of me for it. 
Um, and I might have thrown you under the bus. I said it was Jameis through six picks, not me, even though I was playing the game. I was saying I was offensive coordinator. Don't worry about that. that yeah. I'm, I'm accustomed to that. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm good that we could just bury that now. Yes. I felt like it was, you know, weighing on me. It, right. I think it stopped us from winning an Addy that year. So. Can you keep us up to date on your Madden progress? I want to know when you win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay, I will. Yes. Because I think that would people will believe in you, too. Once it's starting the, to click. Once the world can visualize Jameis Winston win a Super Bowl, then I think that's – that's six billion people that will be sharing in that vision. That That's going to help you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, Jameis, this has been awesome. We want you on anytime you want to come back on. Yes. Uh, this like exceeded everything we thought. We it's yeah. been a long time coming, but this was so great and so thankful that you made the trip because it's so much better in person. So absolutely, thank you so much. We really appreciate thank it. We're you, we're fans for life. So we're not neither of us are Jameis one of one. No, nope. but we have talked to him. Right. So we we ride, we ride. He sends us out if we if he needs to send us out, we'll go we'll go muck it up with some people. You need any angels in free agency? Yeah, just we say got the you. word. Say the word. We got your back. <laughs> oh man, listen, the 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 person I'm praying to, he got me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm grateful for this opportunity uh, to be with you guys, you know, and to share this energy. Like, you guys are, are men of increase. Yeah, and and that's what I'm trying to. Well, that's why I am going to surround myself with, and be unapologetic for it. Yep. Love so, it. So I appreciate y'all. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Seamus. Yeah.